maybe on another layer we'll start to mold the teeth so the teeth I want to use start off by using a UV uh, sorry a circle like so um, we'll probably scale it up a little bit oh there we are sorry we'll scale it down a little bit 32 verts should be okay um, we'll create something that looks like that and then straight away I want to go ahead and delete half the circle like so next select the remain the remaining vertices press E to extrude and then S uh, and turn off proportional editing as well and then S to scale down like so and then grab Z sorry grab Y and then just let's even it out a little bit so we want to make this one relatively thick so grab Y scale down and grab Y so we create the part for where the teeth will grow out okay so select everything again E and extrude on the Z axis just select this uh, edge over here, this edge loop. So alt right click that one, press G, G. So press G twice and move it in just a little bit. Same with this side, G, G and move it in a little bit. And now we're going to select both uh, these edges again. And then we're going to extrude once more. But this time uh, we're going to again select uh, one of those edges and then uh, press G, G. Make sure you select the right edge because it's, it's sort of um, hidden behind the main vert. So try to find it correctly. If you select the wrong loop, then just uh, alt right click again, and you will find and you will find the, uh, the newly extruded vertices. So GG. Okay. So with that now selected, select both new loops again, and extrude downwards. alright like so and then without doing anything else uh, just go ahead and well if, it depends on what type of teeth you want to go for if you want to go for simple cartoony teeth I just extrude it up like that and call it done but we might just do it as individual teeth okay so to see that to see how our change is clearer I'm gonna go ahead and add in a subdivision surface modifier and I think that will make it look uh, a little more clear what we're trying to do. Oh, uh, the edges don't look right. So maybe I might just go ahead and select this face and that face. Sorry, that face and that face and just extrude out once. Sorry, extrude out once just to give the ends of our cavity some thickness. So I'm just going to just go each alternative one for now and just do it that way. So E and extrude upwards like so. Same with this one. E, and then we'll move it upwards. Okay, and we want the front teeth to be um, sorry, like that. And we want the front two teeth. Actually, what I'll do is I'll, I'll save half the effort by um, I'll save half the modeling effort by just deleting half uh, the work here, and then just using a mirror modifier. There we go. Okay, so we want our front two teeth to be the longest teeth, and also the widest teeth. And also the thinnest teeth as well. So we'll just rotate it around the x-axis. The, this is the bottom row of teeth, not the top row of teeth. So uh, let's create the top teeth. So let's go Shift D, put on the z-axis. It should be R Y 180. That's that's right. It's looking good. Maybe I might just you know I might just go ahead and make some changes to make it look uh, unique. So maybe I might just modify that one a little. Uh, I might make this one a bit longer as well. Alright, so now let's just go ahead and add this model straight into our own character model. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and Shift D, move it 
sorry, Shift D here and move it to the first layer. So I duplicate it and move it to the first layer. And then I want to position it. So let's change from individual origins to median point. Now let's just move it in place over here. Like so. And we want it to be right around here. Okay, so one of the first things that I want to do is go over here and I guess just uh, delete, actually turn off the mirror modifier. Same with this one, turn off the mirror modifier. Ooh, it's, it's, it's been applied on a different direction. S, X minus 1. Anyways, um, go over here, grab X and move it in line over here. Uh, and then we'll recalculate the normals. Okay, so we now should have half a teeth model for this. Now to connect it, I'm just going to go ahead and move it a little bit off center of this uh, main character mesh. First select the lower teeth, then shift right click the top teeth, and then shift right click the main character model last. So make sure that that, that order is important. Uh, as long as the main character model is selected last, uh, it is the, the, active, uh, the active model um, that will work. Then we can press Control J it will join both these teeth models to the main character model so it will automatically use the modifiers in the main model and uh, it will save us the effort of having to do everything again so now I'm just going to go ahead and carefully lock them together okay so once we have something that's locked in place like that uh, we can now put the main teeth model into our character so just go ahead and select both these teeth models and then just move it in place to where the teeth should be I'm going to press Alt-H, uh, yeah, and then actually I'm going to go ahead and select the top, the bottom teeth by hovering over the teeth and then pressing L, hovering one of, uh, at least around one of the vertices of the top teeth and then press L. So I'll select, I'll select the linked vertices. Then just to make it easy for myself, I'm just going to go to the data tab, create a new vertex group, and I'm just going to call it teeth. It's just purely just to make it easier for me to select later so because there's so much vertices going on, on around here. Uh, if I would just want to select only the teeth, I can just go ahead here and press teeth, press select, and it makes it very, very easy. Oh, we have one straight vertice, which I don't want to be part of the teeth vertex group, so I'm just going to go ahead and press remove on that one. So now if I want to select just the teeth, I'll just go ahead and press select, and then I can see the teeth uh, clearly. Okay, so the teeth is now added. All right, so now let's go ahead and model the eyes. So I'm just going to go ahead and move just the character, uh, uh, the retopologized character itself to another layer, say this one. Uh, and then I can just focus on this layer alone. So right now we have the eyes over here, but these aren't really going to be the eyes. These are just the eye placeholders so that we can see what it looks like uh, from the viewport of Blender. Um, the topology of the eye has to be a little bit different than simply just a ball with a texture applied on top. To do that, I'm just going to go ahead and press Shift D and I'm going to name this the eyeball. Okay, um, yeah, I think that that's a, a good name. And what I want to do straight away, I'm going to parent it to the eyeball placeholder. The eyeball placeholder is going to be selected first and then I'm going to uh, Shift right click the eyeball last. And then I'm going to go ahead and press Control P, parent it to object keep transform. So now when I move the eyeball, the eyeball placeholder moves along with it. But if I move the eyeball placeholder, the actual eye model itself stays intact. Okay, so I don't need to see the eyeball placeholder, so I'm just going to go ahead and hide it. Uh, I did that here in the outliner, but if you go ahead and select the eyeball placeholder in the viewport, you can also press H to hide it. And that'll do the same thing as hiding it from the viewport. We also will never want to see the eyeball placeholder when it's rendered. So I'm just going to turn off the uh, this little camera here. Okay, so the texture of the eyeball obviously is not going to be any of this stuff. So if I go over here, uh, again, I want to create three different textures. Eyeball, uh, white, Or just the white part. Uh, I don't know the anatomical term, so I just call it that. I do know that the middle part of the eye is called the pupil. That 
the dark bit and also the um, sclera is a colored bit okay so those are the main three textures we need but again we don't need to worry about that for now uh, we're going to actually model the eyeball itself okay so I'm just going to tab into edit mode and um, what we're going to do is we're going to create two different spheres so just go ahead and press shift D so that you duplicate the sphere now go S 0 0.97 yeah that looks okay so we have two spheres with one sphere being a little bit smaller than the other okay so now let's look at the larger sphere so just um, hover your mouse over the larger sphere and press L and um, press Control I that will invert your selection to whatever is not selected and then press H so now we only look at the larger sphere this part of the eyeball the larger part of the eyeball will be simply just the casing or just the, the transparent part of the eye it's the part that will give the reflection so if, if you shine a light on your eye you'll see the, that little reflection that's what this part of the eye will do it's just simply a glass you can sort of think of it sort of like a glassy transparent type of object so all I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to proportional editing connected and I'm going to turn the fall off down and move it a little bit out maybe something like that that's all I'm going to do as long as we have that little bit of protrusion there that's good enough then I'll just select this group of verts as well and maybe push it out a little bit more and press uh, A to deselect everything, Alt to H to bring back the smaller sphere, and uh, ag again, maybe press Control I to to invert the selection to the larger sphere, and hide the larger sphere. This is a part of the eye which will have the eye whites, the pupil, the sclera, and everything like that. Okay, so eventually when we do the texturing, that's what we're going to do. We're going to put, um, actually we may as well add in one more texture, just to be clear. This is the trans, uh, the, the reflective bit. I don't know, it's not a good name, but I'll just call it the reflective bit. So the larger sphere will just be a glassy, transparent material, whilst well, the inside small sphere will just be the part where the actual eyeball will be. Um, so that's how we create realistic, believable eyes. So to make our eyeball look more like it has soul, um, Actually, the part with the pupil and the sclera, it tends to go inside the eye. Uh, let's select this ring of verts over here. Press Shift S cursor to select it. Then select the, these row of verts over here, where the pupil will sit. And uh, ch change this to a 3D cursor. I'm going to go S, Y, minus 1. And we should now have the eyeball being inverted inwards like so okay so um, while I'm also here I may as well uh, as UV unwrap this so we'll look at UV unwrapping a little bit later but all you have to do is go to the front view hit A to select everything there and press U project from view okay and then I'm just going to drag out a new window over here change this to UV image editor and just scale this up so that it covers the square um, we'll cover UV unwrapping a little later, uh, it might not make sense to you, but this is just going to help us with the texturing. What I might also do is, uh, since we can see what the smaller sphere looks like in the mirrored view, uh, I don't like this fall off over here, I like it to be a little bit harsher. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in a loop over here, so press Control R and then drag it up until you see something that looks like that. Same with this, let's add in a loop around here. And then just tighten that bit up there okay so that it looks like a proper eyeball so I know you might be thinking why would the eyeball go inward why would the pupil and the the colored bit go inward like that the sclera um, anatomically speaking that's how our eyeball actually works so at this stage I would call this done so the eyeball has now been modeled and I can now bring back a this eyeball and hide this eyeball so that now when I move the eyeball around the eyeball placeholder 
Actually, theoretically speaking, I know it should be the eyeball placeholder moves around. The eyes should also move around as well, because we want to control the eyeball placeholder, not the eyes. But actually, later on when we do the rigging, I want the rig to control the actual eyeball, and the eyeball placeholder simply is just what we view. We don't ever, we don't want to ever control what the eyeball placeholder does. We want the eyeball placeholder to be controlled by the main eyeball itself. If that makes sense. Uh, maybe it doesn't make sense, but it will later on. So, <laughs> at this stage, that's all we need to know. So that's the eyeball. If you'd rather just get the completed 3D model, please click on the link below. And also, please subscribe, like, and share, and I hope to see you in the next video.